September 10th might be an ordinary day to people, but in the Atlantic Ocean, it marks a key moment to the statistical peak of hurricane season. After this point, activity will generally decrease, uh, eventually bottoming out near zero in November. This year, the peak is coming right on time, as in addition to Paulette and Verde, which I covered in detail yesterday. There are four disturbances that are worth mentioning for development, three of which have a median chance or, or, uh, or high chance of doing so. Now, before we get into all these disturbances, I would appreciate if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. The first system that is worth mentioning is a tropical wave located, located off the coast of Western Africa, and it currently has the highest chance for development, with a 90% chance of doing so in the next five days. So, this system is expected to take a more westward track than Paula and Rene, and as a result, this system is more likely to have impacts to the Caribbean and eventually the U.S. coast. However, as is usually the case with tropical disturbances, we don't know anything apart from its potential track and chance of formation. Well, however, considering the chance is 90% and the storm is going to form in the main development region, we can assume that it has the potential to be a decently strong hurricane in the future. Now, this isn't the only tropical wave that might form. There's another one that has a chance of formation a bit further out. Currently, this storm only has a 40% chance of formation over the next five days, but considering that long time frame, as well as the fact that the storm is still currently located in Western Africa, means that these probabilities have a good chance of going up over the next few days. Unlike the storm I already mentioned, though, this storm might take a similar track to Paulette and Rene, and, and this is evidenced by the fact that the NHC's area of development for this storm comes very close to Renee's current location. As a result, this storm has a lower land threat in the future. Finally, there is one storm that, if it forms, will almost certainly hit land. This storm is currently located near the Bahamas, but is forecast to move into the Gulf of Mexico in a few days, also having a 40% chance for development. Once it does move into the Gulf, uh, it will probably move northwestward, so that means it might make landfall on eastern Louisiana. Again, however, we don't know too much about these disturbances, so who knows how, what intensities they're likely to have or what their precise track is. As a result, we should keep an eye on each storm, especially the Gulf one, as they move into their development regions. And with that, that concludes this update video on the tropics. As always, I would appreciate if you would like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks, and have a great day.